everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show! It's time for another pocket pet! <laughs> so let's peek into the pocket and see who pops out today! <laughs> to make a panda pocket pet that I figured we had to do this one next. And one is not all. I actually made two! Because I want to show you guys a couple variations on this adorable little panda. So two things. You'll notice they have different faces. If doing a little extra embroidery is a little bit above your um, ability, then you can just put on beads or eyes and they stand out nice and dark like that. So you can use big black buttons or big black beads and they make a perfectly cute little face. And you can also do the embroidery. So I just used a little bit of extra black um, yarn and I put patches on his face because that's what pandas have under their eyes. So you can make either or I'm going to show you how to do both today and they both have little tiny mouths. One of them is smiling and the other one's a little serious but I'm going to show you how to do both of those today as well. And a second note if you're making the pocket pets with scraps and you certainly can because they don't take up very much at all this little guy is made using worsted weight yarn. So that's acrylic, worsted weight, it's a size 4. I'm going to be doing uh, today's panda in that yarn. Or you can do a, pon a panda pocket pet, or any pocket pet really, in chunky weight yarn. And I thought I would show you how a size 5 chunky yarn looks. Um, this is actually a medley of yarn. So this is acrylic, and this is actually a... Um, uh, an alpaca acrylic mix. So it was just scraps I had lying around. I probably won't wash him because I don't know how well he'd turn out because I mixed my media. But both of the chunky weight yarns were the same size. And you can see that he gets a lot chubbier. Now you can use scraps of chunky weight yarn or the worsted weight and you can use the same hook. I am using my favorite, a 4.25 or a G6. And G6 is good for both of these pocket pets in either fabric that you choose. So let's head to the craft table. I'm going to show you everything you need today in order to make one of your panda pocket pets and we'll get started. <laughs> Today's panda is the third in a series of pocket pets. So, if you're not quite familiar with the pocket pet series yet, I recommend you check out the pocket pet kitty. It's the first one we made. I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description box below. And there's a lot more attention to making the body because the body is very similar in all of them. Now, I do go through the body today because there's some color changing, but I move a little quicker than I do in the first one. So, if you're not quite sure, you can check out the hello, you can check out the little kitty one we did first and that will give you some help. Also putting on the little ears and the arms and the tail is something else I covered in the first two, the pocket pet kitty and the pocket pet puppy. So if you need help sewing on little things like ears and arms, there's more detail in those first two episodes. You might want to check those out first. But if you are ready for the adventure panda show, <laughs> then let's just jump right into today's tutorial. As mentioned in the intro, you can use worsted weight size 4 yarn. I'm using that yarn today in the tutorial. Or if you're feeling a little more adventurous, you can use chunky weight or a size 5 weight yarn. Um, all the same pattern, all the same materials and tools. So you can use the same sized hook. Um, one ends up being obviously a lot chubbier than the other. <laughs> but you can use both. And I'm going to show you how to do both versions of the face. So if you want a simple version with just sort of the beads and um, or buttons and they show out really nicely, or if you want to do the little eye patch, I'm going to show you how to do both. You need uh, scrap amounts of black and white yarn. I'm using worsted weight. Um, it's that size 4, nice sort of a tight spin to it. Uh, make sure both of your yarns are the same size. You're going to need a size 4.25 millimeter hook or a G6. You can use this one for the worsted weight yarn or for the chunky weight. It doesn't matter. Um, either way, you're going to have nice small stitches. You need a pair of scissors, 
and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. And you're also going to need some needle and thread for sewing on your buttons or beads. And you might also want to use a little bit of embroidery floss or this um, cotton craft floss. Um, that's for the nose and the mouth embroidery. Or if you've got really thin black yarn lying around, you can use that too. But you just want to make sure that you've got needles that um, have an eye big enough that it fits through because that makes your life a whole lot easier. <laughs> and once you've got all those things assembled, we'll get at it. We're going to begin at the top of his head and work down. So you want to start with your white and we're going to make a cinch circle. So you can make a cinch circle any way you're comfortable. Um, I have a tutorial. I'll link it in the box down below in case you need a little help. Remember to chain one because that secures your circle in place. We're working in single crochet. So we are going to work directly into our cinch circle and we're going to make eight cinch, sorry, eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it looks something like that. Grab your short tail, pull it nice and tight, and that sort of helps turn it into a round. And now we're going to work directly into the next stitch. So that's the first stitch we made. We're not joining with a slip stitch, we're just going to continue right into row two. Row two is two single crochet into each stitch around. So we're doubling our foundation number of eight. At the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. So start with that first and work two single crochet into each stitch around. Two, 15, and 16. That is row two. If you need to count, make sure you do. You want to have 16 total at the end of row two. We're still going. We're still increasing. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch and then one and then two and then one. All the way around we are increasing from 16 to 24. So the pattern is two single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next, two single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next. And you want to work that all the way around for row three. At the end of row three, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. Now, if you've made the previous pocket pets with me, this is just the same. So if you want to zip back to the first pocket pet we made, which is the kitty, and I'll link that down below, you can just get a refresher. I move a little slower with that one. Uh, but if you're able to keep up, great. And we'll be zipping along here. So this is row three. The pattern is two, one, two, one, and at the end you'll have 24. And 24. All right, that's it for increasing. So to recap, we began with a cinch circle with eight single crochet in it. We worked directly into the next stitch, so we had um, two single crochet into each stitch of the first, so we have 16 stitches at the end of row two, and that spiral continues into row three, where we worked two stitches into the next, one stitch into the next, two, one, two, one. That is an even method of increasing in the round. So now you should have 24 stitches. If you want to make a quick pause and count them, then go ahead. But that's it for increasing. And now it's just straight single crochet. So just remember, if you need to mark your first or last stitch on your first row with a little stitch marker or a safety pin, you can do that. Um, unless you can see where it spins. So if you can tell where it spins into the second row, that's what I use as my sort of my north star or my marker. And I'm just going to start single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. So just straight. Every row will have 24 stitches in it. You can keep single crocheting for ages at this point and you will never increase your stitch count. And you want to single crochet round and around until you have seven rows complete. So you can count. There's row one, that's the center, 
and then row two and row three. So each bump is a row. You can tell we've done three rows so far and you want to continue single crocheting in the round. No increasing, no decreasing until you have seven total rows. So that includes row one. And I will see you at the end of row seven. All right, I've completed row seven. So let's count our rows. There is our center start, and that's row one, and you just count the bumps in one direction. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know I've got seven complete rows. Now I wanna make sure I'm back at the beginning. So because I can see where my row one spirals into row two, so this little spot right here, I make a point of looking at that, and then I run my finger up in a straight line, and that's where I want to stop single crocheting. So that way I know I have a nice even bottomed in the round shape. And if you've got seven rows and you've single crocheted back to around to be in line with your beginner, or your beginner stitch, we're going to close off this color because now we're going to add his big black panda stripe belly. <laughs> so we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to snip our yarn and then we're going to take that little string and pull it back through the loop on our hook all the way. Give it a nice uh, 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 tight tug and you can just sort of Pull it into the, you can fold it in there or you can sort of just pull it through a loop and just so it's sort of tucked into the inside. You don't have to worry about weaving that in because it's just going to become part of the stuffing at this point. And that is the top part of our panda done. So now we're going to grab our black yarn and we're going to join our black yarn right where we fastened off. So right at the spot where our last row or row seven sort of got slip stitched and fastened off that's where we're going to join our black so you want to make a slip knot and you can make it off your fingers you can use your hook <laughs> however you're comfortable make sure it's not too tight or too loose and then right where i if you can sort of see right where i pulled my yarn through just like that. That's the stitch that I'm going to join my black yarn to. So I have my slip knot on my hook. I put my hook through the stitch where I want to join my yarn. I grab it with my hook and I pull up a loop because I'm joining with a single crochet. So now that slip knot acts as the first loop and I've pulled up a loop and then I wrap and pull through both. All right. So now we're not increasing, we're not decreasing, we're just working around in the circle. But because we've joined our yarn, it can get a little complicated back at the beginning. So I need you to make sure that you count. So this counts as our first single crochet. And I'm just gonna work over my little black tail here. But now you're gonna work each stitch all the way around in black. And you wanna make sure you count because you wanna have 24 stitches. You want to continue to have 24 stitches all the way around because that's a very magical number. <laughs> so one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Make sure you count. You want to have 24 and I'll see you back at the end of row 8 and then we'll work on row 9. All right, I'm just coming around to the end of row eight. I've got 23 stitches so far. I wanna make one more for 24. So I'm gonna work this little space in here. And it looks funny, as you can tell, because that's where we slip stitched and fastened off our yarn. So I'm just gonna pull on that little white a little bit. But I have 24 stitches, so this might look a little funny, but we're just gonna work directly into the first stitch. We wanna join row eight with a single crochet. So we're not slip stitching, we're just gonna keep working in the round like we did the rest of the panda. And you're going to single crochet all the way around, one more row in black. So rows eight and nine are going to be his little black 
tummy and then we're going to fasten off the black color and go back to the white. So it's a little difficult to see this black yarn. So I'm going to let you guys work on row 9. Make sure you have 24 stitches. You should always have 24 stitches all the way around. And when we get back to the end of row 9, you can join with a slip stitch because you are going to be fastening off the color black. All right, I'm all the way back around. So that's two rows, eight and nine, all in black, 24 stitches per row. I'm just going to finish off the row with a slip stitch this time because we're fastening off the black. Little snip. And that's it for the black color. So you really don't need a whole lot for the body. There we go. And you can tuck that down too or weave it in however you like to do that. That tail is doesn't matter either because we're going to work right over top of it because we're going back to the white color now. So we're joining the white just like we did with the black. You want to make a slip knot. And you can do how I did before or pull it up on your hook. Make sure it's not too tight or too loose. And I'm going to leave my string out so you can see where I, a little easier where I knot it off. That's where I'm going to join. So right on that slip stitched stitch, I'm going to join my white yarn because I want to try and keep all my joins somewhat in alignment with each other. And same thing, I'm going to join with a single crochet. So I have my slip stitch on my hook, put my hook through the stitch that I want to join at, pull up a loop, and then wrap and pull back through both. There we go. Alright, two more rows in the body. So rows 10 and 11, all in white. One single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Remember to count. You want to have 24 stitches in your row. And I will see you at the end of row 11. So that's two more rows of white and then we can fasten off and we're done the body. So once you're finished row 11, and I've got all of my stitches in for row 11 here, you can pick this spot. You see where it sort of becomes a second row? You can pick that spot right there to slip stitch and fasten off the row. I just find that kind of flattens it out. So you've got a little bit of a funny bump there, but you're not really going to be able to tell when the whole thing's put together. So slip stitch. You can snip your yarn and fasten it off. And there we go. Pull that nice and tight. And that can just be stuffed in there as well. Now if you want, you can weave it in. If you're um, if you're using sort of a satiny yarn, it's always good to weave in your ends as opposed to just letting them lie loose. But if you're using something with a little bit of grab, like acrylic or wool tends to have, then you don't really have to worry. It's a knot that probably won't undo itself. So you can just sort of tuck it in there and ignore it. Um, or if you want to be neat and tidy about it, you can weave it in. It's entirely up to you. Let's move on to the bottom and then we'll stuff this little guy. All right, the bottom is the same as the previous pocket pet tutorials. So if you've got it in your head from the previous one, remember, we need to start with a slip knot. And this is the bottom piece, so we're going to begin by chaining. We're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain number seven, so that one right next to your hook there is your turning chain. We're still working in single crochet. We're going to identify the second chain from the hook, so this one right here. And we're going to work four, so four single crochet into that stitch. So one, two, three, and four. So that's four single crochet into the second chain from the hook. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four. One, two, three, and four. So that's 
one single crochet into each of the next four chains. That should leave you with one chain. It's your last chain. You're going to single crochet four into that last chain. One, two, three, and four. And you see me sort of fiddling with my little tails. Sometimes I like to work over them just to sort of weave them in as I go, and that's what I'm going to do here. So, all right, now we are looking at the bottom the bottom of the stitches that we did, so that's the, sort of the four going in one direction. We worked another four, it kind of turned a corner for us. Now we're going to work back across the bottom of our foundation chain. So you should have four individual bottoms there. Um, so you're going to single crochet into the next four bottom chains. There's one, two, three, and there goes four. That brings us back to the beginning. I get my little tail kind of out of the way here. We're going to slip stitch, so we're not working in the round technically. We are going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet that we made. So just sort of stick your hook in there, grab your yarn, and pull it back through everything. And now we're making row two. So you're going to chain one to start. And you're going to continue to work right into that same chain that you joined in. Or what's commonly sort of used in uh, pattern lingo is single crochet in the same stitch as joining. So you joined in this stitch, you sort of chained one, and you're going to single crochet into the same stitch. We're going to single crochet into that twice. So it might be a little tricky. Just be patient with yourself. There is no rush here. So it's the first two. And then you're going to single crochet two into each of the next three stitches. So two, two, and two. One, oops, two, one, two, one, two. So that equals eight. Now you're going to single crochet once into each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. We're going to single crochet two times into each of the next four stitches. <laughs> One, two, Come here. One, two, one, two, and the last two. One and two. So we turn that corner again. We've got four stitches left. We're going to put one single crochet in each of them. One, two, three, and four. You should now have 24 stitches all the way around your bottom piece. That's why I said 24 was the magic number because now your bottom piece is going to have 24 stitches that match up with the 24 stitches in the body of your panda. We're going to join with a slip stitch. So identify that first single crochet of the row and slip stitch to join. Now we're going to snip our yarn, but we're going to leave a nice long tail for sewing. So I try to leave around 45 centimeters, um, or a foot and a half for all my American friends. And same thing, pull the whole thing whoop, all the way through that loop on your hook, give it a nice tight tug, and that is the bottom piece. Now you might have a little sort of space, this is where you put your first four single crochet into that second chain from the hook when we started. You might have a bit of a space there, it could be quite large. Don't worry, because when we finish sewing the bottom onto the top of the panda, or onto the body, you can use what's left of your yarn and just weave back and forth through that space as you weave your tail in. And that will not only close in your space, but it'll help keep your um, tail from unraveling too. So let's stuff our panda body and sew the bottom on. Okay, stuffing! 
you can use whatever you like, but I'm using um, a chopped up sock. <laughs> it's my husband's, don't tell him. <laughs> uh, but I like using chopped up socks and t-shirts, uh, obviously old ones that are all holy and not really fit for much else, um, because it makes great stuffing. It's washable, because it's typically cotton, and it um, has a nice sort of weight to it. So I just chop up a sock or the remains of a t-shirt and stuff it in there. Not too tight because I, I don't want it to feel like it's stretching out the stitches. Um, but just enough that I feel like it is stuffed. And I think that's enough right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, and once you've got it stuffed and you feel like you've got enough, you can put your stuffing aside. And you want to thread up, I'll just sort of sit him there. Grab your bottom. And you also want to grab your yarn needle. Thread up your yarn needle. There you go. And this little piece went astray. There we go. Now, I like to line up my, so that's where I, I, as you can see here, I'll just pull out my little tail. That's where I fastened off, so that was my end of my, my last row, row 11. And I like to hook up the same space, so it doesn't really matter. It's just this <laughs> little thing I like to do, uh, because I like to line up all of my um, fasten off spots. So. I'm going to take my needle and slip it through that stitch that I fastened off on and I'm going to bring it out through the same place on the bottom where I fastened off and that is my start point. And now because there's 24 stitches in the body and 24 stitches around the bottom you should have an even perfect number of pairs of stitches. So there's a stitch on the body and there's a stitch on the bottom and you see I'm going through the whole stitch so there's two the two loops that run across the top of a stitch I'm using both so I'm going through the whole stitch and I'm going to sew together the bottom and the body with pairs of stitches and you should have a perfectly even number of pairs all the way around now if you get around to the back where you started and you're one short or one over, just cheat it. <laughs> it's a stuffed toy, so it doesn't matter, and no one's going to notice anyway. But the idea is to try and have a nice even number so that you have sort of an even shape to build the rest of your little Amigurumi on. So go ahead, sew the body and the bottom together, and I'll see you back around at the beginning. Alright, once you get back around to the beginning, you want to create a small knot. Um, I'm only going to knot once, because I don't want it to really be that big. And I'm going to make sure I get it as close to my body as I possibly can, nice and tight. And then I'm going to weave the rest of it in. So, remember I told you about that hole that you might get back at the sort of the middle bottom. I'm just going to weave my yarn in that direction so I can better hide that knot. So it just stands out a little bit, that's not too bad. And then I'm going to sort of weave back and forth through some of my stitches to try and close in that hole a little bit. And just literally cinch it shut. So don't pull too tightly because you don't want to pull it out of alignment with the rest of the bottom. But just a little bit. There you go. It's all closed up. Then I'm going to weave my yarn in through the rest of my stitches back and forth a couple times to make sure that it doesn't come undone. That's why I only knotted once. It's gonna it's gonna take a lot to get this <laughs> un unwound. So I'll weave in a couple times. And then I'm just going to bury the rest of it in the body. Next, we're going to make his little ears. So you want to go back to your black yarn and grab your hook. We're going to begin with another cinch circle. So 
I'm going to make it big enough. Chain one, because remember that sort of secures your circle. Now we're going to chain one more. Ha ha. So you have a cinch circle now with two chains coming out of it. Why two, Jada? Well, because we are going to half double crochet into this circle. So no longer are we single crocheting. These ears are made in half double crochet. What's a half double crochet? Well, if you haven't done my little tutorial, and I'll put that link in the description box too, this is what a half double crochet looks like. Wrap your yarn around your hook. In this case, we're going to go through the circle, grab your yarn to pull up a loop, so that you've got un, deux, trois, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull back through all three. Ta -da! That is a half double crochet and we've completed one. We're going to put seven more in here. So you want a chain two plus eight half double crochets into that cinch circle. And eight. All right, eight half double crochets into my cinch circle, probably looks something like that. Grab the shorter tail, pull it nice and tight, and don't do anything else. <laughs> You're gonna snip your yarn uh, with a tail long enough that you can sew the ear down to your body. There we go. And just sort of, same thing, you're fastening off, grab the whole tail, pull it back through that loop on your hook, and pull nice and tight. And that is it. There is your little ear. And it's a bit tricky to see because I used black, but you can definitely tell against the blue background here that we've got a nice, sort of like a half-ish circle, a little bit of a flat bottom to it. And those are your ears. So you want to make two of those. Ta -da! Now we're going to make his little arms. So you want to make two. These are the same arms as the previous pocket pets. So if you remember, you need to start with a slit, a cinch circle. <laughs> cinch circle, chain one, and you can stay with one chain because we are back to single crochet. We are going to single crochet five, five single crochet into our cinch circle. One, two, three, four, and five. I don't know about you, but I always find the first two sort of stitches into a cinch circle are a bit tricky, and then the rest are eh, a little easier. Once you've got five, grab that short tail, cinch that circle sh shut, <laughs> and you now are going to continue working in the round. So identify that first stitch you made. There it is. I've put it on my hook. We're going to continue single crocheting. So you're going to single crochet for two more whole rows. Just single crochet straight. You don't need to increase. You don't need to decrease. Um, this counts as row one. So you want to do rows two and three. Just single crochet in each stitch all the way around because you're making a little tiny tube and that is going to be our panda arms. So, cinch circle, five single crochets, work directly into the first stitch of your first row, keep working in the round, make three rows total, five stitches each, and that will be your arm. <laughs> and you want two of those. All right, when you get around to the end, and you can probably count your rows a little easier than I can, make sure you've got three, so the bottom round counts as one, and then two and three, and you want a slip stitch to close off row three, and then remember, just like we did with the ear, you want to leave enough tail for sewing the arm to the rest of the body of your panda. So there is your arm. You want to make sure you have two of these. And we've got one more piece left to make, and that is his stubby little tail. <laughs> so we are going to make another cinch circle. We're working in single crochet. So you just have to chain one to start. And this is going to be a little easier than the uh, arms. We're going to put six single crochets 
into the cinch circle. So we begin with six single crochets in the cinch circle. Oh my goodness, try and say that 10 times fast. <laughs> There's two, three, four, five, and six. Six single crochets in our cinch circle. <laughs> Grab your little short tail and pull it tight. You're going to do the same thing that you did with the arm. So you're going to identify that first single crochet you made. I've put my hook through it. And you're going to single crochet around a second row. So six more. One single crochet into each stitch around. One, two, and six. This is why I'm always saying count, 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 because that way you don't lose your um, lose where you are as easily if you're always counting. So you can go ahead and stick in one more single crochet if you feel like it needs it. I like to do that sometimes because I feel like it makes it makes it a little a little more even. So if it fits over the top of your index finger like a little hat, <laughs> then that's all you need for the tail. So you can slip stitch into the next stitch to fasten off. Again, leave enough tail to sew your tail to the back end of your panda. Diddy. And those are all of our panda parts. So just a quick mention. I'm going to, because I've showed you how to sew on the little bits and pieces before in previous videos, I'm going to let you sew them on yourself. So you want to make sure that both ears are sewn on to the top of your head um, about where you feel he looks more panda-ish. So for example, if you're looking at your plain panda, I like to put them just off center. And the easy way to remember that is there's your center, so that's row one, and then one more row on either side, and then I start to sew down my ears. That's how I feel. He looks good. On this one, I sort of you can sort of see I started on top of the second row, but that's because these ears wound up being a little bit bigger, but it's completely up to you. So put your ears on, sew your arms on. Remember to take your arm and <laughs> Oop, that's the tail. <laughs> Grab your arm and pinch the end shut so that you're sewing through both sides of your arm. You don't need to stuff your arm because he doesn't He's just too small, he doesn't need any stuffing. And you sew through both sides of your arm and through the side of the panda. I like to put my arms on the side of the panda. And you can sew around his tail. So you don't have to pinch it, you can actually sew all the way around it. But if you want it to be a little more like flappy, you can do the same thing that you did with the arms. So you can pinch the end and sew it so that it looks like this. Or you can sew all the way around it like that. And I will let you sew on all your bits, and then we'll come back and put on his face. A couple of more tips um, for just your sewing on your bits and pieces. Remember, when you're sewing on pairs of things, like your ears or your arms, I like to bring the, the tails of my stitching out through a common space. And I thought I'd show you this because it's really easy to see, since I, these are the black tails from my ears in this case. I've brought them both, once I finished sort of sewing down the ear, I didn't knot it, I just brought the whole tail right out through a space, and then I brought the tail from the other ear, <clears throat> excuse me, out through the same space, and knotted them together. And I did the exact same thing for the arms, and then I pulled them back down into the body. And you can see that it completely disappears, but I've got one more trick for you. So because you're only sewing on a single tail, and in this case, this doesn't have a, an equal and opposite pairing, so there's going to be this one sort of odd tail. If you don't want to knot on top of your work, leave a pair of tails previously knotted hanging out of your amigurumi. Take your needle and bring that third tail out through the same place as the other ones. This is why it's good to have long sort of sewing tails. And then just quickly knot that one with one of the other tails. So you're going to have sort of a <laughs> a slightly large knot, but it's all going to still be sort of part and parcel of the same knot. Then you can take the sort of the blunt end of your sewing needle and push that knot down through the little space 
and then if you put your needle through somewhere else, you can kind of wiggle it back and forth, and that's how I like to weave in the rest of the tails. Back and forth, back and forth. You kind of catch it with the, the sort of the end of your needle and you pull it one way and then catch it and pull it the other way. And it completely disappears. I sewed my tail on over sort of where the white and black meet, so it covers that little, um, that little kind of connection where the white and the black meets. So you can't necessarily see it and it blends the lines in together a little bit better. Oops. <laughs> so that are all, that's all the little pieces, the ears, the arms, and the tail for our panda. And now we're going to do his face. So Panda here has two friends I already made, and I've got two different versions of doing the face. Now the noses look a bit different, but it's actually the same thing. I just, I went back and forth two or three um, times completely covering an area with the same craft floss as I used on this one. I just made his nose a little tinier here because I felt that his eye patches were really big. So I, I wanted to put less emphasis on his nose so that it was more on his eye patches. But here I gave him a nice big bear nose. And I, I like both of their faces. Um, putting in the eyes is really easy. I used beads on this particular panda because I liked that they were a bit glistening. They've got multiple facets on them so they catch the light in different ways. And I thought he looked really cute with just the plain eyes and without the eye patches here. Um, so if you're just going to do the plain eyes, you can just sew on beads or buttons exactly where you want his eyes to be, and then embroider his nose in the middle, and remember to give him a little V-shaped mouth at the bottom. Um, and if you're putting on eye patches, I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to need more of your black yarn and your yarn needle. You're going to want to run um, anywhere up to three feet or um, a little less than that of yarn because you don't want to run out. So 60 centimeters is probably enough. That's about two feet. But if you're not quite sure, you can give yourself a little bit more. Thread up one end. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out through one place. So right where you think you want to put his eye is the one spot that you're going to pull your needle out of. But first you're going to enter somewhere through the middle of the black band. So I'm thinking I'm going to put his eyes fairly evenly spaced on his face. And if you can see, I've got three stitches. One, two, three. The three little V's of some stitches between my Thumb. So that's how I'm going to base it, and I'm going to bring the needle right up next to my thumb. There. Okay. So I'm going to pull my yarn up, and I'm going to leave a tail. So there's a tail. I'm going to leave a little bit of tail kind of hanging out the front because this is going to be one half of what I knot off with. Because once I'm finished putting on both my patches, I'm going to bring my yarn back out through that same little space, knot my ends together, and pull it back into the body. So what I want to do is just kind of make a patch. So I'm going to make some long stitches that kind of, as you can see here, I'm, I pulled them down to just uh, about level with the black band of his belly. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of eyeball that space. I'm going to make sort of a strange filled in triangle. And I'm going to put my, hook, my needle in on an angle and bring it back out in the same spot up top. <laughs> okay. So there's my first part of the patch done. Now I'm going to put my needle in just next to it, but I'm going to bring it back out in the same point up top. So no matter how many stitches I put in, if you're using thicker yarn, you're not going to need that many, but if you're using thinner yarn, you might want to put in a few more. It depends on how big you want your patches. 
you can go to the left, to the right, but always come back out the same top piece because you want that kind of angled look to happen. And I've got little bits of my sock stuffing trying to come through here. Nope, not going to happen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go one in the other direction now. Back out through the same stitch up top. And you can kind of look at this as filling out a, um, you're kind of like doing the outline. You can fill in with a few more stitches here and there. But I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go out. No, I'm going to bring it down this side. Okay. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to put in as many stitches as I feel I need just to sort of fill in that um, patch because I want it to be mostly black. I don't want any white showing through because panda eye patches are pretty dark. And it looks like five stitches is going to do it for me. That looks pretty, pretty covered. Maybe one more just to be safe. Okay. But here's the trick. I want to bring it out opposite. So after I put my needle in here for my one last little uh, stitch, I want to bring it out to start the next eye patch. So I'm going to look at what will be fairly even. Yeah, looks to me like if I bring it out what looks to be equidistant, on the other side. I can do the exact same sort of stitching on the other side. So I'm going to stick my needle in just to the line, just above the, the line, the black line here, and then back out through the same, same little spot up top. And same thing. So I'm going to put in sort of a what I consider the outline of the patch, and do the same thing on this side. When you're finished with your patch and you figure that they look pretty even, place your last stitch where you want it and bring it out through the same little space that you entered from. Try not to take any of your stuffing out with you. <laughs> there we go. There's two fairly even looking eye patches. And then you can knot your ends together. So I wound up giving myself a lot, I cut off a lot more yarn than I needed, but that's okay, because I can use it for stuffing. Trim your ends. And you can take that knot, I don't know if you can see the knot sort of sticking out top like that. Stuff it back down into the body. Grab it from underneath with the edge of your needle, and then wiggle your needle around until it disappears into the body. And then there, you've done some embroidery on the front of your little toy, and there is no evidence of knots. <laughs> now we can put on his little nose, his little mouth, and his two button eyes. All right, now I'm moving on to the nice black floss. So this is that sort of black floss I showed you at the beginning. If you've got really, really thin yarn, you can use that too. But uh, I like the black floss for this. Um, but I mean, it's completely up to you. It's your little amigurumi. And make sure you've got a needle with an eye that will fit whatever material you're using. Once you're all threaded up, we're going to decide where to put the nose. I'm going to try and put it right in the middle of the face between his two eye patches. So I'm picturing this little V as his nose. And I'm going to really close up on here. This is the V I'm talking about. These two little parts of a stitch. So I'm going to do the same thing I did for the eye patches. I'm going to put my hook, or I should say my needle, through a space in his belly and I'm going to bring it out right at the bottom of that V space because what I'm doing is I'm creating a little triangle nose. So every stitch that I make, whether I go this side or this side or in the middle, it always comes back out through that same bottom stitch and that's what's going to give us that nice little triangular effect for his nose. So I'm going to start by bringing my thread out at the bottom of that little triangle piece. And 
I'm going to leave myself um, enough that I can knot off with, so just like we did for the eye patches. And then I'm going to start. So, I'm going to go first to one side. Try to make sure that you don't catch up your tails or tangle up your thread. <laughs> And then I'm just going to go, maybe do that one a couple more times. So always coming back out to the same little bottom spot. And one more. <laughs> okay. So there's three on that side. Now I'm going to go to the other side, so sort of the other corner. And I'm trying to keep my stitches somewhat loose. I don't want to make them too tight because I don't want them to um, pull. I don't want the nose to get pulled out of alignment. So I'm going to try and put three stitches sort of going one side and then three stitches going on the other side just to sort of outline my nose. There we go. And then I'll do a few more out that side. There's another one. There we go. And now I'm going to fill in across the middle. So this is where you start kind of sticking your needle in wherever you feel that it'll be even across the top. And you're going to do that as many times as it takes, always coming back out the same place in the bottom because you're making a nice triangle. Alright, and once you think you've completely covered in that little space, oh my gosh, he's so cute, I like his little nose already. Once you think you've got enough of the nose covered, and I think I've got enough, you are right back down here at the bottom, and you can put in his, the, his little mouth. So you can either do a nice simple mouth like this, so you go a V, so one stitch in one direction, back to the middle, another stitch in the other direction, and before you leave here, you come back out through the bottom, or you can do a slightly more complicated little mouth, which is two of these. And I'm going to show you how to do this one, because it actually includes this one. So if you want to stop here, you can do this one. If you want to do this one with me, you can do that one too. So you take your needle, <laughs> and we've come back out through the bottom, so you should be right here. And first we're going to create a bit of a V. So I'm going to go right down in this case to just at the top of where his black stripe starts on an angle. So if I actually pull my thread, you can see sort of the direction I'm going to go in. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to put my needle in on that sort of space that will create this part of the V, but I'm going to bring it out on an angle going in the other direction. If you want to make the plain V, then you bring your needle back out at the bottom of the nose. But if you're making a little smiley face, you go the other direction. So up and out the other direction. So I'm just going to pull this. There we go. Don't want to make it too tight. So that's one part. Now I'm going to come back and go back down into that same place, but I'm going to take my needle and bring it back out at the bottom of the nose. Okay, make sure I don't pull anything too tight. There we go. And now I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to try and make it even. And that looks pretty even, so I'm going to stick my needle in right there, right where I think it'll be even. And remember that you want to go on an angle out the other way if you're making the smiley face. Okay, so that's the other half of the V. And now I want to come back down into the bottom of that V, but because I'm now finished his mouth, so I'm going to go back down into the same place, that bottom stitch, bottom of the V, right there. But I'm going to come back out through the same place that I entered my yarn. So I'm going to spin my little guy around and make sure that I am coming out through the same place. There we go. 
that I entered originally from. So I'm going to pull it not too tight, make sure that my other side of my yarn comes out. There it is. And loosen up your mouth if you have to, just by pulling up on it a little bit. There, he looks like he's smiling. Then you can knot your two ends together. And once again, I got a lot more thread than I needed, but I can A, use it for another project if there's enough, or B, use it as stuffing. Um, it's not going to go to waste, but you definitely always want to make sure you err on the side of having too much embroidery um, yarn or thread when you're making patches or embroidery on a face than too little because trying to knot halfway through it is so annoying. <laughs> Trim up your ends and I'm just going to pack that back in using my other bigger hook. There we go and same thing. Just weave it in. There, so there's his mouth. There's no sign of a knot for the mouth or the nose because we knotted our ends together and pulled it back into the body. Nice and neat. That's one of my favorite amigurumi tips. So it's a good one to keep in your arsenal. And now all we have to do is sew on his little button or bead eyes and we've got a panda. So just like we did with the eye patches and with the embroidery of the nose and mouth, we're going to take our needle and thread and we're going to pass it through a space that we'll be able to find later. <laughs> I'm going to bring it out right at the corner of the eye patch and make sure you leave a little bit of tail. Put your thumb on it if you have to to keep it from kind of getting pulled into the body because you want to have enough tail left over that you can knot your eyes on afterwards. And just a quick reminder, if you're making this toy for a small child, then I would not recommend putting on beads or buttons because we don't want anything getting pulled off and swallowed. So anybody under the age of four getting a little planned a pocket pet should probably have just plain embroidered eyes. Um, or you can make a cinch circle and single crochet four single crochets into the cinch circle and slip sort of stitch it shut and trim it off and use that as your eyes and those will be much safer for a little person. And of course it goes without saying if this is going to be a toy for a rambunctious person you want to make sure that everything is sewn on nice and tightly. So ears and the eyes and the arms and the tail. You just want to run your sort of thread <laughs> through the eye back and forth a couple times um, underneath an entire stitch and back out into the eye patch and you can pull it nice and tightly because you want that eye to sort of sit down in the head of your panda and once you've run a few stitches through it you can take your needle put it into your panda and bring it out on the other side of his face so right at the top corner of the other eye patch Try not to get it tangled up with the ear. <laughs> and then you can put on the other eye. So you're just sort of repeating the same process on the other side. Once you've finished sewing on your two button eyes and you think they're as sewn down as tightly as they can be made, then you're going to take your needle and come back out through that same little space where you brought your yarn in, knot your edges together, and pull the whole thing back into the body of your panda. And there you go! One panda! <laughs> or two, or three! Let's see if I can carry all three of these. <laughs> A gaggle of pandas! <laughs> a trio of panda pocket pets <laughs> and that is how you do it so a panda with a simple little face or a panda with a special patchwork face and remember if you're making them for little people leave the buttons and beads off because you don't want to have any accidental chokings that's not very nice at all um, you can just put in simple little uh, single crocheted eyes instead and that will still make a really cute panda 
That is it for today, everybody. I'm going to take my cute little panda family and I'm going to head downstairs because it's getting cool out and we're going to get under a blanket and get all snuggly and have some bamboo snacks. <laughs> have a great week, everyone. Stay tuned for more fun coming very soon and we will see you again on the Jaden Stitches Show. Bye!